help and care. Vessa, that's been good. so for the IHS refund. If so, your social workers, your doc would not be getting a refund. Sadly, you haven't been licensed yet, and obviously your employers are employing based on the fact paid for the IHS fee. Hi everybody, hello, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Ambi C. Ezen. If this is your first time of logging onto my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe, share and comment. So today, I decided to do a video concerning the whole health and care. This uh, that's been in the news for about a week, that's yes, last week actually. I've been quite busy, it was my birthday on the 20th, today's 22nd, so just been trying to organize things and whatnot. So last week there was an announcement by the UK government for health and care professionals. So that's not healthcare profession professional, health and care professionals. So your social workers, your doctors, your physiotherapists, they will be offered a reduced rate of visa costs, visa application costs and a fast track visa. I think this has already been somewhat announced about i think last year during the whole brexit thing it was vaguely announced that this might happen the whole fast track of visa for nhs new nhs visa that's what it was called or that's what it was suggested last year and um, but recently last week it's been finally announced that there is going to be a thing like that and also in regards to the ihs exemption i had done a video concerning that Sometime in May, I think, um, that has received lots of attention and whatnot. But yeah, that's going to be a thing. And like you know, when you apply for your visa, whatever you do is applied to your dependents. So in this case of IHS, usually when you apply for visa, your IHS fee will also be paid by your dependents. For the new rule of the IHS exemption for um, health and care professionals, your dependents will also be exempt. Which makes sense, to be honest, since a normal circumstance that they get charged based off the fact that you're there, you're dependent on your visa. So what happens to you, happens to your, to your dependents and also in the case of the IHS exemption charge. So there are a few dates I had put down here in my notes so that I can address it. I've seen questions. What does it entail? There's, I can see the application page. If you read the whole resource or if you read the whole thing that's been released, you see that. The date on there is August, so starting August, so obviously you can't see a provision to apply there at the moment for the, the visa that has been announced last week. So from August, that application route, yeah, will be open from August. And because on the resource it says summer, so July through to August, so August is where it will be open, so be patient. And for the refunds, IHS refund, I'm leaving the link to the IHS video that I did down below. IHS refund from March 31st, so on or after March, so if you had applied for your visa on or after March 31st, then you're eligible for a refund. That's if you fall under the health and care professional list, the professions listed under the health and care sector. So if you fall under that and you apply for your visa on or after March 31st, you'll be getting your refund and according to the resource, it says that Presently, they've started actually refunding people. So you can contact them, send them an email, and obviously they'll review your case if to see if you're actually eligible for that. So if you apply for your visa before March 31st, unfortunately, you would not be getting your refund. You can try to message and <laughs> let them know, but um, usually a date when the policy will be applied to. So if anyone that applies or paid for the IHS fee before that date, would not be getting a refund, sadly. This new health and health and care visa has come as a way to say thank you to the immigrant workers and immigrant health frontline workers during this pandemic. As you all know, there's like one in a very small amount of people that are international frontline workers. And so this would obviously fast track things in regards to application, coming in to work for the NHS, and whatnot. So there are two things that are applicable in the health and care visa. That's going to be the fast track and on three weeks or less. Basically a fast track decision if you fall under the health and care sector and also the reduced fee. I had shared something on Twitter and it got like so many messages. So different professions have been messaging me. Um, I usually focus on pharmacists in regards to guide and 
in regards to conversion course but i'll come back to it as you know a health and care sector you have doctors psychologists um physiotherapists pharmacists nurses midwives social workers paramedics and for some of these professions you are required to be registered or licensed to work because your cost that's your certificate of sponsorship for you to get that the points based you know, it's a point-based system. For you to get those points, you have to meet such requirements. And your employer usually will ask or check if you're actually licensed. So, obviously, they won't employ you if you do not have that licensing. Example, as a pharmacist, you have what is called the OSPA. So, for overseas, overseas pharmacists, you have to convert to register in the UK. And for pharmacists, this is only done in the UK. So you have to obviously do the 52 weeks and do the exams, then you get licensed. So in that case, if once you get that licensing, you can now get that leverage to apply for the health and care visa. But how do you apply for it if you haven't been licensed yet? And obviously your employers are employing based on the fact that you are a pharmacist registered with the body in the UK. I think for doctors, you can do the exams, um, one of the exams while in the con in your home country or so I'll confirm that but basically this health and care visit is applied to if you already have that licensing and if you are already registered with that body that's if you have a body to be registered with I would also assume that they might make registration in regards to the following professions listed easier as well hopefully they do that but basically that's it so obviously you have to register and convert so that your license is acceptable in the UK, if that makes sense. That's everything I wanted to address. That's everything I wanted to chat about. That's basically what the resource is saying. Saying for a well for a job well done. So there'll be healthcare visitor of reduced price and a fast track decision timeline. So that's what the resource is talking about basically. Thank you so much for watching, guys. It's a short one, it's just a quick guide, a quick recap in regards to that video and in regards to that information if you have more questions don't forget to drop me a message or leave your comments down below thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to subscribe comment like and share